Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at Indiana Jones and the Great Circle. Speaking of which, thanks to Nvidia for providing me with a game code for the premium edition of the game so that we can look at it and examine it more closely. What I wanted to focus on in this video was to see how far 12 gigabytes of VRAM can take us all the way into 4K. And for that, I'll be using my RTX 3080 Ti paired with a Ryzen 5900X. I was actually genuinely curious about this. Even though 4K will be the main focus of this video, I did want to take a look at 1440p. We've maxed out all the graphical settings, including set texture pool size to Supreme, which does actually affect the amount of VRAM that you need. And we're not using any upscaling, just native TAA for now. And we're going to start in the jungle. This is a very good looking game, but one thing that kind of stood out to me, especially in the jungle, was that there is a bit of flickering with the shadows. Sometimes they look uh, a bit low res. It does stand out a bit. And we're actually getting the uh, full ray tracing or path tracing update with the day one patch, which is tomorrow, I believe. And I have a feeling that's going to clean up these shadows real nicely. I'm actually genuinely curious to see uh, what they've been cooking as far as uh, path tracing and this game. It should be pretty interesting to take a look at. But for now, the game still does require hardware ray tracing in order for you to play it. And obviously the 3080 Ti is a very capable ray tracing card. As a matter of fact, I would say it's very comparable to the 4070 Super in most cases. Although games like this one that take advantage of uh, Ada Lovelace architecture like shader execution reordering, I'm assuming this game does, the 4070 Super would probably have an advantage. But still, the 3080 Ti, no slouch, native 1440p, TAA, we're averaging around 100, 110 FPS with 67 FPS, 1% lows. Relax. And even though I haven't yet made it very far into the game, this jungle area is a fairly demanding area, as you would imagine. We could try using DLSS and set it to quality, swap from native TAA, but I don't think we're going to get much more FPS just because looking at the GPU utilization, it does look like we are fairly close to being uh, CPU limited here. And yeah, that appears to be the case, right? We were previously getting around 100, 105 FPS, and now we're getting 115 ish FPS in the same area. I guess it kind of makes sense. I mean, it's a jungle, there's a lot of geometrical complexity in the scene. And as you can see, a 12 core 24 thread CPU like the 5900X, we're utilizing 40% of it, which is fairly high. The games are very single core dependent still. So if you're maxing out one of the cores and threads, that is a CPU bottleneck essentially, because I do get comments sometimes where people say, well, you're not using 99% of your CPU. How can you be CPU bound? And that's not really how it works. Games don't utilize the CPU in the same way as they do the GPU. But anyway, 1440p, this is no problem. 12 gigabytes of VRAM, you can max everything out. No problem there. Let's check out 4K. Before we dive into 4K though, Alex over at Digital Foundry put quite the legwork looking at the different VRAM size cards and how that can affect the performance as it relates to the texture pool size setting in the game. The conclusion, don't go beyond the ultra setting at 4K for 12 gigabyte cards. Well, let's put that to the test and see if we can make some adjustments. I'll put a link in the description, although I'm pretty sure if you're watching this video, you would have seen that. I wanted to begin 4K by maxing everything out, uh, just so that we can see it. We've set texture pool size to Supreme along with everything else, and we're using DLAA, so native 4K with DLAA. And yeah, the game looks absolutely gorgeous. I mean, except for that tree shadow on the window, so that doesn't look very good. It looks a bit blocky. But other than that, I mean, the game, the lighting looks really, really good. I can only imagine how much uh, path tracing is probably going to improve all this stuff, including the tree shadows, which can be quite distracting. And it looks like the glass uh, might have uh, ray trace reflections, although fairly rudimentary, very low res looking. And it doesn't include dynamic objects like reflection of yourself or this NPC, for example. I'm hoping that the path traced update can fix this and maybe include proper, you know, good looking uh, ray trace reflections, which I'm personally a big fan of. But switching back to the performance of the game, yeah, we start to hit some issues after playing for a little bit. Like walking around, it can actually be fine. 
one second you're getting 70 fps and then as soon as you engage into this cutscene well, your performance is more than cut in half. And on top of that, actually, right after this cutscene, I began getting some weird glitches. Check this out. Yeah, not very pretty, right? So, yeah, clearly we're hitting some VRM limitations with 12 gigs and the texture pool set to Supreme. But we can try to lower that a bit. And let's go with Ultra, like Alex suggested, and then see if we can bring it up a little bit higher. Okay, so we're back in the college. Back at 4K, this will be a good point of reference. And as you can tell, texture pool size, we went from Supreme, then there's very ultra, and we landed on ultra. I am gonna try to see if we can go with very ultra, by the way, if we make some tweaks. So stay tuned. It's gonna be coming up in a minute. But as of right now, as a start, well, we get our 70 FPS that we were getting here, no problem. However, lowering the texture pool size, as you can see here, we it does increase the popping a little bit, unfortunately, which can be a bit distracting. But then again, this is the early access version of the game, and there is a day one patch coming tomorrow with the path tracing, and chances are there's probably even more fixes. So yeah, they, they could fix this pool size thing like they did with The Last of Us Part 1, for example, right? There's, there's tweaks and fixes that they could potentially make because, you know, people are aware of this. But how will the game react in this cutscene? The performance shouldn't really drop much, right? We're getting very healthy 80, 90 FPS. And engaging in this cutscene, well, it's very consistent about what you would expect. So yeah, Ultra actually works pretty good. But what I wanted to try next is see if we can maybe go with Very Ultra and make a couple of tweaks. So let's cross the Atlantic and check out Rome, Italy. Okay, so let's go over the tweaks that I've made and how I would play this game with this card if I was targeting 4K, which is what we're targeting here. We've set texture pool size to very ultra. So we went a step up above and we've set DLSS to quality. And the reason being is this area is a bit more demanding than the college was where we were getting 70, 80 FPS at 4K with DLAA in this area here, we were getting around 50 to 60 FPS. So with DLSS set to quality, we went up by 20 something FPS, which is the type of jump you would expect to gain with DLSS set to quality if you weren't CPU limited, which in this case we are not. And yeah, guys, I played this mission for about 15, 20 minutes, um, or something like that. And the performance was very, very consistent actually. And for the most part, the pop-in wasn't as bad, although, yeah, you can still notice it and it can be a bit more distracting. Now, on that uh, Digital Foundry video, Alex actually used a console command to increase the way the distant assets are loaded in. And I'm actually curious to check that out, which I will be making more content on this game, obviously, because it's a very interesting game, especially with the path tracing. I'm very interested to dive more into that as I've made many ray tracing comparison videos in the past. But I also want to see how we can utilize cards that have more VRAM, you know, to make the game look as good as possible, whether that be with maxing out ray tracing or maxing out the distance and minimizing pop-in. I think there's a lot of things that you can tweak uh, that I'm genuinely enthusiastic about. And uh, yeah, that's kind of what I like to do in this channel is just make videos fueled by my curiosity and share them with you guys. Now, thanks to NVIDIA for giving me a copy of the premium edition of the game so I could take a look at it a little bit early. But I'm also a Game Pass subscriber, so I will be checking out the Game Pass version of the game as well. And having the Steam version should be be quite interesting because in the past we have seen uh, versions of Steam and Game Pass being uh, a bit different in features. Usually Steam version tends to be more up to date, but this will be very interesting because that is the case. I'll be very surprised because this is a Microsoft game. You would think they would prioritize their own store, but you would think that they probably wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> but who knows? I, I guess we'll find out. Uh, only time will tell. But as far as 4K, I think this set in the texture pool size to very ultra with DLSS set to quality. I mean, it's working out, at least in this level. I don't know. Maybe there's other levels that are more demanding on the, on the VRAM. It's quite possible. After all, I'm pretty sure that Alex 
did a lot more digging into this than uh, obviously I have. So maybe he found such areas and found that the ultra is, you know, the more consistent, you know, set it and forget it type of setting. But in this channel, we like to tweak with things and see what we can do and how much we can get away with. And that was kind of the whole point of this. So, yeah, personally, if I was playing this game uh, with a 12 gigabyte card and I was targeting 4K, these are the settings I would go with. And, yeah, the game looks absolutely phenomenal despite the pop-in issues yeah so i guess to, to wrap up my thoughts and arrive to a conclusion well uh, this is a very very impressive game right it's highly dated it looks gorgeous now there are some things that can look maybe a little bit dated mostly in the jungle some of the assets like one thing that unreal engine 5 has is you know nanite is really incredible right it just T gets rid of that whole pop in and LODs. It just it, that is a next gen feature that's very nice. But it tech, I would say I like it better, and the reason why is because I would sacrifice that for getting better and more consistent performance, which we do get with the it tech engine. I'm only surprised and wish that more studios were using it, especially Microsoft's own studios, right? I know I don't know if an open world game would work well in this engine. I'm not sure, but I love looking at proprietary engines, and this is a very good example of a very good engine that runs really well. Now, yes, a game that has such high quality assets as this uh, will be a, a bit VRAM hungry, but I still think that 12 gigabyte cards, obviously 1440p is not an issue and the game runs really smooth. Now at 4K, yeah, you will make uh, a bit sacrifice it, but it's not all that much, right? You'd set in texture pool size from Supreme to very ultra or ultra, right? I don't think that's such a big deal. The game still looks absolutely incredible. I guess my two biggest issues would be the popping can be a bit distracting, even if you max out the texture pool size, and there is no FSR yet in the game, or XCSS for that matter, just TAA and DLSS. I don't know if that's an early access thing, and it's coming with the day one patch. I guess time will tell. But what are your guys' concerns and thoughts? Leave a comment down below. Let me know. Give the video a like if you did like it. Consider subscribing if you want to see more similar content. And I guess that's going to be it for me. I will see you on the next one. Peace. <laughs>